Hello everyone, this is the first tutorial for ERGG24308 probability and statistics for engineers. Hope that all you come to the right place. First thing that all of you have known from Piazza that the arrangement of this tutorial is different from other courses. And this is also the first time we give such a kind of tutorial. So if you have any comments, please let us know and we will keep improving during the semester. Remember that the only purpose of the tutorial is to help you study better, so feel free to approach us for any comments or helps. What we will talk about today is chart, and we often use chart to visualize the data by graph. And the purpose of the chart is to help us organize and analyze data. So far it is clear and straightforward. Then we will change a little bit about the logical direction. Assume that if you are provided by a large quantity of data, you have strong intention to find a tool to help you ease organizing data without losing any information or properties, right? Then you will easily think about visualization as graph is more eye attractive than the number. And the later thing is that we apply certain type of ch chart. Thus, for you guys, actually you follow the logical like the picture on the left shown rather than the opposite direction. In fact, for charts, there is no hard line to say that for this set of data, the only choice can be blah blah chart and the others are not a nod. But there exists some principle you should follow, like preserving the data relationship or property and organize the data in a good manner and good looking, at least a lot to ugly, right? In a word, what you do should match your motivation that help you organize and understand the data and the relationship between data. Now we will take a histogram as an example to show what the abstract sentence we have said mean. The data is the same as what you have seen in the lecture. You should have a memory about it. There are 16 measurements with the minimum measurement is 18 and 18 and the largest measurement is 37. In the lecture, the professor draw this histogram for you. Except the requirement in the problem. How do you feel about it? Is it straightforward or somewhat strange? Do you have any puzzle about why the initial boundary and ending boundary should be 17.5 and 37.5 while the width of the class is 4? We will answer this later. Now let's go back to our starting point first. Why we need chart? We need it to help us organize and understand data and the relationship between data, right? Then if we have such a histogram with just one class, is it a good histogram? Absolutely no. Why? Because it loses the relationship between data. For this histogram, all data belong to one class. What we can know is just that there are total 16 measurements with the minimum number is larger than 17.5 and the maximum number is smaller than 37.5. Nothing else, right? Then if we want to reconstruct the data from this histogram, it is possible that the original 16 measurements are all 18 or are all, are all, all 37. Right. It is significantly dif different between these two sets. The main reason is that this histogram loses too many properties of the relationship between data. On the other hand, if we have such a histogram with ways of class to be 1, any problem? It is yes. We can easily observe there are too many classes with frequency 0 or 1. You can see from screen that for just 16 measurements, the histogram is crowded in horizontal axis. Then if for hundreds of thousands of data, it will be hard to show on screen. For this histogram, actually it preserves almost everything. When we want to reconstruct the data from this histogram, we can get almost the same to the original one. 
However, for this histogram, data is not organized in a good manner. Too many bits are zero. It is meaningless except for occupying the space. Recall our motivation is to help us organize the data. Thus, this is not a good choice also. However, one thing needs to pay attention is that both of them are bad histograms, but not wrong. They satisfied all the requirements of a histogram, but they don't match our motivation that is organizing and understanding data and the relationship between data. Okay, let's go back to our example. The width of the class can be 3 instead of 4. Sure. If we take the initial boundary to be 17.5 as on the lecture, and the width of each class to be 3, we will have a histogram like shown on screen. Two things we need to pay attention is that the initial boundary needs to be smaller than 18, as the minimum measurement is 18. The same reason the ending boundary should be larger than 37, which is the maximum measurement. One more thing is that could, could we have initial boundary to be 17? Let's have a try first. The right hand side shows the Excel output histogram when we set the initial boundary to be 17. It seems that no difference. But one thing you need to pay attention is that when you set the initial boundary to be 17, then all the boundary will be integers. The third bin ends at 26, while the fourth starts at 26. Then how to count the measurements value the 26? You can count it into either of the bins, but not count it twice. At the same time, you need to add one expansion to ex to state the rule you count in order to avoid this misleading to other persons. This is why we set the boundary to be 0.5 while all measurements are all integers. Then we can avoid this directly. At last, uh, on the lecture, the professor has shown you how to use uh, MATLAB to draw your own charts. Uh, one simple, one common software you will use is about Excel. At last, we will show you a small video tutorial to show you how to use Excel to draw a histogram, and you can apply the similar rule to draw some other kinds of charts.
have data. Thank you. 